truck gang, welcome back to some dynamics. So we got a big problem here. So we have a five megagram truck and a two megagram car, and they're gonna collide with each other. So these velocities are their initial velocities before they collide. And it tells us that after they collide, the car moves with a relative velocity of 15 kilometers an hour relative to the truck. So the car is gonna go 15 miles an hour quicker than the truck after they collide. So our goal is to find first the coefficient of restitution, E, and then we wanna find the loss of energy. So let's start with the coefficient of restitution. It's this equation here. So we're gonna run through it. Uh, but first of all, let's write out what we know initially. So velocity A1, right? That's the initial velocity of A1 is 30 kilometers an hour. Velocity A2, what's that? That's after they collide. So that's the truck. So it's gonna be, we know that the car is gonna move with a relative velocity of 15 kilometers an hour quicker than the truck. So if we do, well, let's go ahead now, we don't know what this velocity is, let's set it equal to V. So then velocity V1, as seen, is 10 kilometers an hour. Then velocity V2, it's gonna be 15 miles, or 15 kilometers an hour quicker than the truck, so that's gonna be V, this unknown V, plus 15. So that's how we're gonna relate it. Um, so let's go ahead and go through this equation with these numbers now. So we're gonna keep it in kilometers an hour for now because it's gonna cancel out in the numerator and denominator. So we don't have to worry about changing it yet, but later we are gonna to have to change them. So velocity V2, that's gonna be V plus 15. And then VA2, it's just V, so it's gonna be minus V. So you can see here that this V minus this V are gonna cancel out and we're not gonna to have to solve for it yet. So we have VA1, that's gonna be 30. And velocity V1 is 10. So you're gonna get 15 over 10, and you're gonna get that, that E is equal to 0 0.75. Okay, so that's the first part of this question. Now we need to find the loss of energy. So the equation for the loss of energy, delta T, is equal to KE, or not the sum. I guess it could be the sum. Um, but it's gonna be kinetic, kinetic energy final. That's kinetic energy initial. So to find kinetic energy, we need our velocities. So we need to actually figure out what our velocity is at each of these points, and we need to convert it to meters a second. So let's first of all find out what this V is. So if we want to find what this V is, we're going to need to use the momentum equation, right? The sum of the momentum initially is equal to the sum of the momentum's final. So let's add up the momentum's initial and the momentum's final. So the initial is before the crash. So before the crash, it's going to be the truck, which is 5,000 kilograms times its velocity. Um, can we keep it in this? Yes, we can. 30 plus 10 or 2,000 megagram car, right? Kilogram car, and then it's going to be going 10 meters, 10 kilometers an hour. So then let's do the final one. So the truck is going 5,000, or has 5,000, and then it's going velocity V afterwards. That's what we're solving for. And then plus a 2,000 kilogram car times velocity plus 15. So now you have this equation with one unknown, and if you solve for V, I'm not gonna do it here, you're gonna get that V is equal to 20 kilometers an hour. So now that we know that V is 20 kilometers an hour, we can go back up here and say that this is 20 kilometers an hour. And then this is 20 kilometers an hour plus 15, which is gonna be 35 kilometers an hour. Okay, so now we have all the velocities, so we can go ahead and uh, I'll keep this. No, I need to. I need more space. So we're back to this equation: the change in energy. Okay, so like I said, we need to convert all of these kilometers an hour to meters a second. So let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to do that. Let's start with the, the thirty, right? Thirty. If we want to convert kilometers an hour to meters a second, we know that there's per hour. 3,600 seconds, so that's gonna cancel the hours. And then we know that per kilometer, there's 1,000 meters. So what we're doing is multiplying 30, all right, so we're gonna take V, uh, we know whatever one or whatever, and then we're gonna multiply 1,000 over 3,600. And that's gonna give us in meters a second, right? So if we do this for each one of them, um, let's see how, how I'm gonna do this. I should have wrote this better on my page, but velocity A2 this is going to be 5.56 squared. And then velocity A initial is going to be 8.83, not squared. This is in meters a second, right? So V1 
or I guess B, yeah, B initial is going to be 2.78 meters a second, and this is going to be 9.72 meters a second. So now that we have them all in meters a second, we can finally go ahead and do this equation. So we're solving for delta T. So it's a kinetic energy, right? Equals one half mass velocity squared. So we can factor out a one half because all these are going to have one halves in them. So let's start with final. So final is going to be, let's start with mass of A, velocity of A, final squared, plus mass of B, velocity of B, final squared. And then we need to subtract that from the initials, right? So this is going to be mass of A, velocity A, initial squared, minus mass of B, velocity of B, initial squared. So now something we can do, we can factor out, or we can, we can organize by the masses. So delta T is equal to one half mass of A. So it's going to be velocity A final squared minus velocity A initial squared minus mass of B, or not minus, but plus mass of B, velocity B final squared minus velocity B initial squared. So now what we have to do is plug in our numbers. So let's go ahead and do that. We have that one half. Mass of A is 5,000. Then velocity A final up there, velocity A2 is 5.56 squared minus velocity A initial, 8.83 squared. Then we're going to uh, add that to velocity or mass of B, 2,000 kilograms, times velocity B final squared, velocity B2, 9.72 squared minus must be one squared. Uh, I'm do that backwards. Yeah, no, two point seven eight squared. Okay, so plug this into your calculator, and you're gonna get that that change in energy is equal to negative nine point six five kilojoules. So you just get nine thousand six hundred fifty joules, but per to kilojoules, it's this number here. So there you go. That's how you solve this problem. Uh, it's a bit of work, but most of it's just like converting, right? Uh, but it's about knowing all the equations we've learned so far. So if you have any trouble, uh, check out the rest of the videos on my channel. I have a whole playlist of dynamics videos. Hopefully those can be of some use to you. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.